All command to reds, red one. Keep your eyes open, boys. Over. Guys, see what I'm seeing? Where the hell is everyone? Hold position, over. upset but we talked about this right look okay it's a little like football i'm the team captain and now it's time for us to go play in the big game but you've never been to war before kiss the kids for me two vehicles down i repeat we need immediate evac over copy that red one help is on the way Gentlemen, this is a skilled and highly prepared enemy who has coordinated a citywide attack. We have a Christmas tree! Since I'm not gonna be here for Christmas this year, I thought maybe we could celebrate early. A platoon's been attacked. I am anxious. We are all so anxious. No, I don't see any hostiles. Maybe it's over. No. Now they're just regrouping. I promise I'd get them back safe. I promised all of them. I'm gonna need all of this to come back. Everybody rebound! Thank you, Lord, for all my wonderful blessings. Bless them for their sacrifice. Get in! Back up, back up, back up! I just gotta go over there. I gotta go help some people. Why? Those guys in my platoon. They're my family, too. Congratulations, guys. This is a beautiful series. I've gotten to see it early. I love it so much. Uh, Martha, I want to start with you. I mean, what, what drew you to this story? To tell, share a story with these guys. I, I think this story came to me, and I was covering the war and heard about this battle, and once I met these guys and who'd been through it and who shared these incredibly intimate details with me on one of the most painful days of their lives and then meeting the families and hearing their story and that they really had to go into a battle mode as well. I've just stayed with them and they've stayed with me through all these 13 years and I kept going back and I became closer to a lot of them and I often say that reporters, I guess, are supposed to be objective, but I'm not objective at all about sacrifice and service. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, round of applause. I heard some people clapping back there. Um, you know, what, what did you think when Miko Allen approached you about turning into a series and how that process come to be? Um, Miko Allen is, is the screenwriter and executive producer, showrunner. I met him nine years ago after Mike Metavoy optioned my book. Miko immediately wanted to meet the families, wanted to bond with the families, wanted to know more about the families. He did in so many ways what I did and, and became close to everyone. He has been so respectful and careful with detail and you know, certainly listens to me if I have, have an opinion about something, but it is just the essence of truth in, in this series. And, and I often, I look at this, when I covered this for ABC News uh, for many, many, many years, which is really how this started, there was no video that existed of that day. That, that was an ambush, you know, there's not cameras in place. So for me too, just seeing this visualized after all the accurate descriptions from people of what happened is, is an extraordinary thing for me to see it mm. on screen as well. Absolutely. And when she says these guys, we have a couple of these guys in the room with us, guys, Eric and Aaron Fowler. Come on, give them a round of applause, guys. Eric Berkwin. Um, what was it like seeing what Martha wrote and then seeing this develop into a series? Start with you, Eric, please. It's, um, I, I keep using surreal because I, I can't think of a better word. Um, it's been intense. It's been really healing. It's, uh, it's enabled me to speak about something that, you know, it's pretty difficult to get out. But now being able to be a part of this production, the amount of things that I learned just overall throughout the whole experience and how many other people contributed to, you know, 
essentially the reason why I'm still sitting here breathing. You know, it's been, um, it's been, you know, it's been amazing. Aaron? Absolutely. I feel much the same way. Uh, I, I was very hesitant at first. It's a huge responsibility to have, you know, all the eyes of your brothers on you to make sure that the story is getting told right. But at the same time, how could I not take that opportunity if given the chance to make sure that, that I can add whatever authenticity to the story that is going to keep uh, those that made the ultimate sacrifice alive forever. Um, so it's also been a very healing thing for me to be able to process through a very traumatic event uh, in a very long timeline and to relive some of my worst days uh, in a very safe, controlled environment. And to be able to share that with my friends is just an amazing opportunity that very few vets or anybody for that matter could possibly get. Um, and to then share it with the Gold Star family members and now to share it with veterans and Americans uh, and citizens of the world. Uh, to, it's just amazing. Absolutely. I'd love to ask uh, the actors, uh, start with you, Noel, just what, what did you respond to in the script and what drew you to this process? Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that, that drew me to the script. The, the story is, uh, is heartbreaking and, and uh, how it's written. Miko put together a script based on Martha's book that, are, that, are, that just puts you there in a way that I had never seen before depicted in, in something that's, you know, talking about war. Um, something that's really lovely and, and I think really fascinating about the story is that it really takes the time to explore not only what the soldiers are going through, but what the families go through at home and, and before and after. It kind of, it, it's, com it's complex and it, and it doesn't um, kind of apologize for that. I think that's really a positive. And Kate? Um, you know, I I read the entire miniseries and just was so blown away by the writing and the story, and I, I didn't know much about this particular battle. And so I was learning about it and um, moved by it. It was just an incredibly powerful um, series. And, and then I read Martha's book and was even more sort of blown away by um, the way it was told. Um, you know, we live in a very statistical, um, you know, time in which we see numbers on the news and we, we kind of swipe past it. And so this story for me feels like a very important one to tell right now where, you know, we have to really take a minute and understand these are people that are sacrificing their lives. These are families that are sacrificing their lives for us, for our safety. Um, and so for me, the, the, the power of that um, story of humanity in a very personal way, I, I felt was significant, particularly now. Yeah. Absolutely, EJ. Um, <clears throat> Miko likes to say that he only tells stories that deserve to be told. And obviously this is one of those stories. Uh, it's really easy to forget that the military is made up of real people, right? Um, and as an actor, as an artist, it's extremely rare that we get the chance to tell a story that's not only entertaining, but is an opportunity for healing, that we get to be a vessel for healing, for understanding a bridge between civilian and soldier, between soldier and family. Um, that has been one of the greatest honors, greatest honors of my life so far. Um, and I'm just really happy that I get to share the stage with these amazing people and talk about what it was like acting in this show that was really about their fucking lives, you know? Yeah. It's brilliant. Absolutely. And Michael, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Clap whenever you feel the need to clap. There's going to be a lot of those opportunities, I'm sure of it. Uh, Michael, how about you? Yeah. Um, I forget what the question was. Just, what, what did you There's respond to in the script? Absolutely, yeah. Where's the, the badge? <laughs> Caught up in it. Yeah. Where's the badge? <laughs> I'm sorry, Charles. <laughs> oh, you did a fantastic job, sir. But what you responded to in the script and in the character of, uh, you know, General Flasky now. I think for me, it was, it was that, it was that, um, I think they, that everyone's sort of touching on now. That this wasn't just a story about a heroic soldier dying in a heroic soldier's arms. It's a story about the true cost of war and how it goes to the families at home. And there's that child who might not ever see his dad again, or there's the mom and dad who's just dying to know if their kid is okay or not, you know? And like Kay said, like we are, we process so much information now and kids with their phones and everything is so immediate that it's like a guy dies and it's like, oh, that's sad. 
next, what did Trump do? You know, it's like <laughs> there is a problem when we as a society are so far removed from these great men who are willing to give their life for our freedom so that you as a journalist can talk and I can go play cops and robbers. It's, there's a real disconnect and the way that, you know, if people watch this and all of a sudden they're like, oh, maybe we should have a little more respect for our veterans or maybe we should think about that guy who went through hell for my freedom. Like, Absolutely. that's what I want for people to take from it. And that's when I read this story, I was like, wow, you see the true cost of war. That's what's so great about this show that's different from other military projects. Absolutely. How about you, John? Well, I can't say it better than it's been said, but, but I agree. I think that cost of war idea and, and the fact that it's paid ultimately by individuals, by individual human beings, and that gets lost on us. That's been lost on me. Um, and I've come a long way in my, my understanding as a part of being a part of this process that um, it's very easy for war and for the troops uh, to be politicized, to become a political talking point. And I don't believe this is a political show, but I think that it could have political ramifications in that when we talk about war, whether we talk for war or against war, and war is sometimes very necessary, but we have to remember as a civilian populace, as a voting populace, um, as, po as politically minded or, or socially active people, that war is not an idea. War is a very personal experience for very specific individuals, whether they're on the battlefront or they're home uh, uh, waiting to hear word of a loved one and giving up their safety and security for a year, sometimes more, um, whether it's the communities that are affected by our foreign occupations. These are individual people that bear that burden and pay that price. And once we have our faces rubbed in that, then, then argue on either side. I, I'm for it, but let's remember we're talking about human beings, and I've certainly had a refresher course, and I'm excited to share that with the world. Amen. It sounds like they got the right cast for this show. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but it's fantastic. I mean, Martha, I'd love to hear, did you, did you know that this story would still be so relevant today? I mean, what's it like sort of telling this story now and, and knowing that the guys are still over there? Well, I, first of all, I think it's extraordinary, if not unprecedented, that you still have some of the guys who are in this miniseries who are still on active duty. And uh, so still serving overseas, still, still, <laughs> we have five, We're or, six, out right now. Yeah, five or six of the guys still serving on active duty. I mean, it also tells you how long we've been at war, mm -hmm. um, that this war goes on and on and on and on and on. I, I, it absolutely is relevant, and in many ways more than ever. I mean, not only is it a good time for America to look back and say, take a breath, this is what happened, and this is why, and you know, as everyone here has said, look at the cost of war in reality, but it, 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 quite extraordinary, the Army cooperated in this, and total props to the Army on this, because it is a raw, warts and all look at war, look what happens on the home front, Noel's character, who um, is, is not your average army person. I, I mean, that they backed that and the story of Thomas Young, it, it, you've seen it. it, it is an amazing thing and, and truly props to the army. So in some ways, it was time for the army to exhale too, mm -hmm. or time for the military to say, you know what, we need to take a look at this too. We were thrown into this situation unprepared. We, we did it with courage. And so let's step back and see how this happened. I mean, you guys had the, you know, Gold Star fam families were visiting the set. Um, you guys were talking to the real life guys. I mean, what was that like for you guys? I mean, maybe you can go down. Can I just say here. they've been amazing. <laughs> They're not going to say this themselves, but this cast has been amazing with yeah, the, it's with apparent. the Absolutely. soldiers, it's very with apparent. the families. I mean, they've treated with them utter respect. And just like these guys are brothers, Beavers and Berkland. Mm, yeah. It's Fowler, Fowler, you're kind of a brother. Maybe, maybe we'll start with you, John. I mean, talking about having Eric actually there and working with you in this character, and then we'll get to the rest of the actors as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I was extremely intimidating. I mean, you can see him. He's an extremely intimidating guy. Um, but also very the way tall guys, yeah. Right the way he's depicted in this book, the way he's depicted in the script. Um, very quickly when you're reading these action sequences and I'm trying to imagine myself uh, being believable in that role, you can you very quickly go, I, I don't know if I can do this, but there's a story I like to tell about one of the first times I sat down with Eric and I was just trying to get to know him and trying to ask an intelligent question. And I asked him, hey, what was the first time that you realized you were good at soldiering? 
And he said, I spent every day of my life in the military waiting for somebody to walk up to me and say, hey, we figured it out. You have no idea what the F you're doing. <laughs> and I, I think what he was trying to tell me is like, I'm a human being, not a superhero. And I had exceptional training. These guys had exceptional training and they executed in, in extraordinary circumstances. But at the end of the day, they're making it up as they go. And they end up fighting for the guy on the right and the left of them, as every soldier will tell you is what, in, what it ends up being about when, when it really goes down. And, and so I think it was that generosity from Eric and that generosity from Aaron and the, the rest of the guys from 2-5 Cab and the Gold Star families coming to us and saying, we believe that you want to and are capable of telling this story as truthfully as it needs to be told, and we're behind you. And when you have meals with uh, Sylvia Arciaga and you get to hug Lupe Garza and she tells you that, go tell my, my son, my husband's story, go in Eric's case, go tell my story, but more importantly, go tell the story of the men that sacrificed, paid the ultimate price that day, those who carry with them forever the burden of having been a part of something like that, those who are still serving, and, and, and tell the story of soldiers outside of this platoon, outside of this battalion, tell the, soldiers, the story of soldiers that are currently serving overseas, and remind everybody it's a human story, and Eric likes to say that this miniseries is a love story and I very much feel that I felt it from him and we want to give it back absolutely absolutely Michael I mean you got to uh, the actual uh, now he's a three-star general but he visited the set right I mean what was it like meeting him Valeski In intimidating as all hell <laughs> I imagine <laughs> this is a guy that you know I remember and I like to tell the story of, of Eric and Aaron walking me around to meet the real live guys when when they threw this kickoff party for us and they walked me around and introduced me to, to a lot of the real soldiers. And they were like, hey, this is Michael Kelly. He's, he's playing Valeski. And they just looked me up and down. And they were like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some big boots to fill. Uh, every one of these guys said they would still follow this man into hell. And I like to say that I had Gary Valeski on a pedestal before I met him from watching the interviews, from reading the scripts, from reading the book. I thought the world of this man. And then I met him. And all of a sudden, I understood everything that anyone had ever said. Not that I didn't before, but I had a greater understanding. And he went on an even higher pedestal in my mind. Like, and this is a guy who's still who's still doing it. You know, he's still out there fighting for for our freedom. You know, um, and, and and like you were saying, like most of y'all probably know where I lie politically, but it doesn't. That doesn't matter about this. It does. This, it shouldn't matter where you lie politically because war happens whether you like it or not. And these are the guys who are willing to lay it all out for you. So it doesn't matter. You're there, you're there. And that's the way it is. So you just have to have the utmost respect for them. And Gary Valeski is a man who I have the utmost <laughs> respect for. That's for And he thought Michael Kelly was a cool dude. <laughs> wow, you put that on the really? resume, what, man. What, that's pretty I impressive. More than that. He probably doesn't give too many of those out, it, I imagine. It's right next to surfing on special skills now. Surfing, <laughs> Gary Valeski thinks you're a cool dude. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, EJ, how about you? Um, I didn't get to meet Shane uh, as soon as I would have ideally liked to. Uh, I think he was still involved, and it was hard for him to come He's out. still active duty. He's still active duty. Um, but how else do you get to know someone that you can't meet? You ask the people who care about them, who've known them, their friends and loved ones. And I asked Eric, I was like, is there anything you can tell me about Shane? And he said, well, Shane's a self-described geek. Right? Like he calls himself like one of the biggest geeks in the world, which is weird to hear from someone who you think of as this like amazing soldier. And then he also said to me, Shane is everyone's favorite younger brother and a break glass in case of war kind of guy. What is that? How the heck do you even begin to be like, hey, I'm your buddy, but also I'm a badass. <laughs> you know, like that's a really interesting dichotomy. Um, you were the guy for the job. Yeah. I was! <laughs> yep. um, it is, yeah, I hope so. That'd be nice, right? Um, but it's been, an, it's been an honor, and I got to meet Shane, and I kind of realized how his brain worked. He's constantly thinking, and I can relate to that. Like, I'm, he's constantly going somewhere. And what he said about being in that war zone was that when everything else was being shot up and was going through chaos, it's like it caught up to his brain. So he went from being like constantly going like this to being, <sighs> oh, okay, no, this I understand, this I get, which is fascinating, right? 
Um, one of the favorite, my favorite parts of this project for me, and it's a selfish thing, I'm not a stereotypical male, and like I'm a Brooklyn boy, I'm from a Puerto Rican family, so you're raised in this sort of machismo, you know? And when you think of soldier, you think of badass dude, you think of strong, silent, not very emotional guy. And I think we're breaking that stereotype with this show. I get to play someone who's like, hey man, I'd rather just go play some Dungeons and Dragons. You know, if you're down, let's go. You bring that up multiple times. I yeah, mean, absolutely. he really, like, we met and we had some chicken wings, and he was just like, so the new game is this. <laughs> um, and that, this guy's, what is he now? He's a. He's, he's, first of all, he's been deployed 65. Oh my God. Months. And you're thinking rank? Right. Sure right. Major. I mean, what's fascinating is like, the real soldier is the everyman, is the every person, is the guy who's like also the comic book geek, comic book geek reading in his mother's basement, who just happens to be a really amazing soldier, and I think that's more important. That nails it. I mean, that is exactly right. These are all distinctive, different people. That's right. I think. Um, and if we can, if I can be a part of breaking that stereotype selfishly, I think that's awesome. And if I could just add on you actually being the perfect person to play that role because this is this is a guy who who literally one day came up and was like with a with a box full of these cables all in their single packages. He was like, Here you go, man, you want one of these? And I was like, I'm I'm not too techie, right? And I was like, what the hell is this? He's like, Oh, this is how you connect your computer to your television. I was like, Oh yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> and then the next day he's like, Hey dude, we're gonna do some uh, Muay Thai jujitsu training in the backyard if you wanna come over. So I was like, that really is the perfect Swiss guy. Swiss Army the knife, man, I like it. He's such a badass geek. <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. Right. That's a seal of approval right there. Um, Kate, I mean, this, 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 the show, as well as the book, Martha's book, does a, such a fantastic job of showing the war at home as well. And I think you have a couple lines addressing that as uh, Gina Denemy. Can you yes. tell me about meeting her and, and working with her on this character? Yes, Gina is such an amazing woman. I mean, you know her and Troy, her husband, so well. But she, I was really lucky. I um, spoke with her at length before even stepping on set. And my first day at work was... Actually, my first scene was my most emotional, sort of intense scene. So you hope as an actor that you get like, I'm gonna walk up to the door and I'm gonna knock, and like that's all I have to do on like my first day. And like this one's like you're jumping off the ledge and you know sort of bearing your soul to a set full of strangers. And so I, um, I remember I spoke to her and I said, oh, it's it's a heavy one today, or it's an intense it's an intense emotional scene today. And she just wrote back to me. We were texting. She wrote back, you will be great in capitals. And so. I really felt like she was with me the the entire time. I felt like I was doing this for her. Like it was a real um, conscious responsibility and one that I f felt very honored to have. Um, but it was something that was never far from my mind. Like it was it was always there. Yeah. I love that she gave you some things that you were oh, yes. there and she I mean some of those little details that you got that are so perfect. I asked her because so she had, her, her son is named Merrick, and he's now 13 years old. But she literally had Merrick, and then uh, they were at the hospital, her and Troy. They went and had Merrick baptized, and then literally straight to the deployment field, like within 48 hours. It was something very, very short. And uh, so I said to her, what were you wearing at the deployment field? Because it was an important scene in the series. And she told me, she said, a Navy s sweater that had a V-neck and jeans. And she, and she said, actually, I'll send you a photo. And she sent me a photo. And then there was a little yellow ribbon that was over her heart. What was the ribbon? Do you remember? I think it was a little yellow because Puerto our troops. Sort of right. So, but yes. And it was something that so she I, wore in the field. That she wore. And I said, oh, I'll try, I'll try and replicate it. And she said, you know what? I'll send it to you. And so she sent it to me. And so I very, very much felt like I had her in my heart. And it was, I mean, it was an incredibly special thing for her to do. And, you know, she's, she's an amazing woman, really. Absolutely. That's amazing. How about you, Noel? Um, I got to spend uh, some time with uh, Thomas's mother and brother, uh, Catherine and Nathan. Um, it's, it's, I mean, I'm touching on something everybody's kind of uh, uh, talking about, but when you get, at least my experience is when, when you're able to sit down and see, be walked through a lifetime of photos by, um, you know, this person's mother and uh, get to, you know, ask, ask their brother who also served um, you know what this person was like. What what was important to them? What what? Tell tell me anything um, about this person. You you get to soak up and and uh, 
exist in it in a, in a totally different way. The responsibility, I think, that a bunch of people have been talking about here is, is uh, y y there's no way around that. It, it, it's something that you, you realize really quickly um, in, a, in a different way. You can read a script and understand that this is somebody's life, and then it's a completely different experience when you're sitting down and looking at photos of them when they're a child, looking at the photos of them and their brother when they're 10, when they're 20. Um, reading a letter that that you know the only letter that Thomas sent from from Iraq it's it really is uh, it's hard to put into words it's a pretty profound experience and it makes the uh, the realization that y this is on you to tell um, it, it's a uh, it's daunting and a complete blessing at the same time Absolutely. I mean, Martha, you touched on this, but the sets were absolutely incredible, and you guys actually shot at Fort Hood, right, in Texas, um, that base. And then Eric and Aaron, you guys were uh, technical advisors on the shoot. I mean, what, would, what did that mean for you guys in, in training up your crew here and uh, putting them through the gauntlet, getting them, uh, getting them shoot ready? It was, um, it was an experience all in of itself. One, the set was amazing. They built like 80 buildings to replicate. It was the largest working set in North America, yeah. right, at the time. That's it incredible. was, yeah. I think uh, 12 acres is what they said. And uh, they replicated the set in detail. And, you know, Seth Reed, he's an architect, and he was part of the art team that put everything together. And they had, you know, four different types of sand just to replicate the different places that we went through. So being able to actually be back on the battlefield has just been, has been crazy. And, and it was, um, it was very realistic. And the only thing that was missing really was a smell, but it's really hard Happily. to replicate that. Yeah. <laughs> Happily is a good way to put it. But I mean, the details that went into it and the effort and the amount of soul people put in to try to make it look as close to as real as possible was profound. You know, it just it affected me in an awesome way. And it was amazing just being able to be there. How about you, Aaron? Absolutely. Uh, Thank God I was there from the beginning um, to see something that was very familiar, the exact same place that our unit trained at before we went on that deployment, um, to see it night by night, a new street would appear with more buildings. Uh, but to be able to process it in small little increments uh, day by day, because by the time it was done, like seriously, we had a 15,000 gallon recirculating sewage pump. Um, we had everything you could possibly imagine. And to take our friends, our buddies that were there with us, um, especially when it was quiet and you know everybody's on break, to walk through with the vets, They're like a freeze frame in your mind, like you pause the DVR on, on a memory and to walk through it with your friends and to just process it and talk about it. Um, such a unique experience. And then to have people that are just desperate to provide authenticity and to be able to put them in touch with whatever soldier performed that action on the day. So like to be a conduit of information back and forth, uh, it, it's been an honor to help uh, tell our brothers and sisters story. Absolutely. And what was it like for the actors going through that, that boot camp process with these guys along with uh, Michael Baumgarten, right, and Jericho Denman, who helped you guys uh, train you guys up? What was that like uh, thrown in the gauntlet? Noel, you're smiling, so we'll start with you. It's, it's, uh, it's eye-opening. It's extremely eye-opening. Um, one, really, one of the things that I always, um, I always remember about, about the boot camp is, you know, when, when we are, as Aaron said, we were training on the uh, urban training environment on Fort Hood, so it is literally where these guys actually trained. Um, man, it, it, there's a lot of windows and a lot of, there's a, it's, it's impossible. It's in a very, very... There's a lot of ways to get shot. Is there's what a lot of yeah. ways, yeah. And it's, it's really interesting when you think of, you know, you can keep it as a concept, but if you actually, you know, John and EJ would basically get told, okay, take your platoon from this building and get to that building. And, you know, Mike Baumgarten would be just hiding out there somewhere with like some blanks and a rifle and, and just, it was, it was, it would, mayhem would get created really, really quickly. And that was a, an interesting experience because it just, things get away really fast. And that was, that was, a, that was cool to feel and experience. With blanks. <laughs> Noel's With being blanks. humble. He is the reigning champion of okay. the magazine. Well, you know, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> in God, our division, I had no Noel idea. Noel has done a military show before I, this. Yes, I have been trained And he before. didn't tell anyone. <laughs> so we were doing smooth, mag races. Man, and smooth, man, smooth. Yeah, it was real smooth. Nice. Well, well turtle. also add to that, though, that he's more physically and mentally more man than we'll ever be. So that's <laughs> already we're, we're operating at a disadvantage. I can admit that. It's fine. But it, yeah. was, it, it was cool to see, though, that, like, you know, the first few days of, of actually, like you said, when Mike went out with one man with one gun right. and could hide somewhere in this city, and he would take us all out 
and like that. And no they time. waste. Oh, he'd send us pictures. And, and he'd take pictures with his <laughs> iPhone and be like, see, you're in no way in cover. He'd, li- he'd literally died put, five he'd times. put his rifle out so that it would be in the photo, like some video <laughs> game, and it'd be like, you guys are all smoked. <laughs> That's dastardly, man. That's dastardly. But, but by the end, we got to the point where he only took out like half of us. Yeah. And so we did grow as a group. So we, proud we, of progress. you. Progress. <laughs> so progress. proud to see your growth. So it, was yeah. Yeah. Cool. it was improvement. It definitely improvement. But these guys, they gave everything to us and, and Mike and Jericho like you said they literally were there for us every single step of the way like every one of us wanted to be better than we were the day before every one of us wanted to, to give it the, as much truth and authenticity as we could and they were there for us just nonstop, above and beyond always always talking and so we, we had a great advantage doing, doing this with these guys. And they lived on Fort Hood, a lot of them. I mean, you got the true army experience Whoa. living on base. No, no, no we fancy hotels. Catering. We had yeah, like three well, bedroom houses. Well, kind but, of yeah. the true army. A, a, a lieutenant general's experience, maybe, is what yeah, you got. Was, yeah. Boot camp with Gatorade. Boot camp with Gatorade. Boot camp with Gatorade. As an actor, you're used to getting nice things. You stay in nice hotels, and, and, and it's one of the perks of doing this job. You get really nice shit all the time. There was none of that. I mean, yes, okay, my place was big. I had three bedrooms, two of which I never stepped foot in, except for to look under the bed before I went to sleep. <laughs> but, but, for Michael Baumgarten, is Mike that what Baumgarten it is? might have been there, right? I'm yes. a little bit of a scary guy. <laughs> you do that is, anyway. I got scared I one night, and I thought Ian, well, one of the, Ian Quinlan plays uh, Specialist Arciaga. Yeah. Um, I, and Ian was my next door neighbor. I got scared because I thought he was trying to sneak into my house to play a prank. <laughs> And I cleared my entire house with like a nail clipper ready to like, <laughs> I was freaking out a little bit. I was like, someone's in here. They're staying with you, me. man. The show's staying with you. I like it. <laughs> Crime riddled Fort oh, Hood. definitely yeah. staying with it. Yeah. Well, one of the cool things was that Mike and Jericho really helped teach us how to think. Hmm. It wasn't about preparing us for a specific scene and we we're going to be here and this is what the shot's going to look like. They taught us or attempted to teach us how to even begin to think in a war zone in an urban environment. And literally these guys wrote the book on it, didn't you? Like they wrote an entire book about your deployment and what you guys did over there. That would be my book, isn't oh, it? Yeah, I, Excuse I, me. I don't know if I you guys read, heard about it. Yeah, process. It's really great. <laughs> What's the title? No, Long Road Home, I love it. Um, Kate, I mean, what was it like for you sort of working with Jason? I think you, you guys filmed all your stuff up front, right? The families did all their stuff and then you, you had to say goodbye and then see see how it played out in the end. You know, tell me a little bit about that. I was that, no, I am just saying, like, really seriously, they just went into the most yeah. emotional scene in the whole. I know, whole. it was crazy. Well, and it's funny because Jay, I think Jason is such a lovely, lovely. Plays Troy Denemy. Yes, yeah. he plays my husband, Troy Denemy. And, but it was one of those situations in which we, we met, and it was like, so nice to meet you. Okay, you guys are married now, go. Mm. You know? Here's I mean, a baby. It was that yeah. quick. But he's, he's lovely, and it was just so easy to, to be married to him. Um, but actually, we only had one day of shooting, maybe two. Um, but the, I always say the person I feel like I was really married to is Sarah Wayne Callies, because she, you know, it was so, it's very rare in which, you know, women have scenes together and multiple scenes together in a, in a complex dynamic. And Sarah and I really had that experience together very much as these guys had their own experience. You know, Sarah and myself and, and some of the other actresses felt very bonded in the way that the wives would back home in their communities and how supportive they are of one another. And um, that was a very important aspect to um, portray in terms of war, which is the the families who are holding down the homestead and how emotional and, and physical that can be um, and and how they really come together as a community and support each other and the importance of that. Can I tell you, say one Gina Denemy story just to just to drive this point home? And Gina, no, I'm not going to tell, okay, that, don't one. tell that, that one. Don't tell that one. I promise. Don't <laughs> so tell that one. Actually, no. I, I might later. You can maybe convince me. But this this is a really profound story. And Gina, after that day, and, and Troy was wounded, after that day, their garage was in the back of the house. And she would never drive straight to that garage and go in. Right. She would always drive around the front of the house before she'd go in just in case a car was there, giving her notification. Oh, she couldn't, that story just kills me, but yes. it, it is exactly what these families go through. That's and you true. really saw that up close and, and appreciated that. Well, and it's great. I mean, it was so invaluable to me because she, she Gina would um, divulge that type of intimate detail to me. And even though that's not in the show, I carried that with me, you know? And so it was, you know, I, I just felt very lucky to, that she was so generous with herself and her life. 
You guys did a beautiful job. Well, we have some questions in the audience, so we're going to start right there. Hi. Um, so I was wondering, uh, for, for the soldiers, was it hard to uh, kind of go back and re have to relive some of those experiences that maybe you wanted to put in the past? And, and for the actors, was it hard to let go of some of those? And they were like strong and emotional experiences. Was it hard to let go of after the fact, after the shooting was done? You know, initially it was pretty tough just because, you know, revisiting bad days in your life, no matter what, are tough. But uh, being able to actually be there in a safe and secure environment surrounded by a good support system made it, you know, made it a lot easier as time progressed to be able to acclimate to it. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to wrap your head around. Uh, and there were some times where you, I had to take a step away from set because it just becomes too emotional uh, when you see somebody that looks exactly like your friend um, doing exactly what your friend did and then uh to watch your friend die over and over again throughout the takes um it's very emotional but it's the most intense exposure therapy i can imagine and i would not have been able to do this even a year ago but uh the the ability to grow uh, has been amazing because of these guys to give it to give to us and the other vets and family and it's going to be amazing for all those families out there who get to watch it on Tuesday and sort of share their stories and, and sort of collectively, cathartically get through this. Um, yeah, next question. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you so, so much for being here today in Minsalat. Um, and my question is, for, for how did you prepare emotionally for such intense role? And what did you do to go through all of the emotional roller coaster that these people went through and to be able to feel what they felt? And yeah, how, how did you prepare for this? Now, I don't know that you really, that you really ever can, right? I, I think that you have to read something and either you identify with it as an actor or you don't. This book, this scripts, these scripts were very easy to identify with on a, on a human level, I think, for all of us. I think I can speak for everyone. But you can't listen to him talk without feeling a sense of just utter compassion. And, and you get choked up. You know, you hear these. This is, it's real. You get to draw from a real life experience. And just simply reading it, if you can't identify then, 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 you, then, then there's the people who didn't do the job, you know. I think for all of us who did, it was you read it and you're like, Jesus, God, you know, I got to tell the story. I, I, that's speaking for me, but I think. Well, and also, I felt like unpreparedness was part of it. Yeah. Um, being thrust into a situation that felt over my head, in some ways, simulated and emulated what happened to these guys. And so at a certain point, I kind of started to embrace the fact that I couldn't be ready for what was being asked of me. And it made me feel like maybe I was taking a lap in Eric's boots. And um, and then like Michael's saying, these guys were just so generous with their time and their families. We spent time, we had meals together, we laughed and cried together. And at a certain point, you don't feel like you're telling a fictitious story that you're trying to conjure in your imagination. You're simply allowed to share in a story that's still happening and channel it a little bit. And it's an extreme privilege. I'm changed by it. Yeah, actually, um, just to dovetail off that, I think I think that's the power of this whole uh, miniseries and, and book and script to begin with is that it really does allow you to walk, take a lap in, in the shoes of people that you... There's no way to have any kind of similar life experience. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that that is uh, storytelling at its best, right? You get, to, you get to be a bridge between people's experiences and uh, the audience who gets to watch this on some level gets at least a little bit of a hint of what that could have been like or would be like. And I think that that's, uh, that's especially with stories like this and, and in times like this, that's an extremely important thing because we need to be able to identify with people who have very different life experiences than we do in order to communicate properly, so. Can I, can I add, um, I've never been able to play with such a large group of amazingly talented people. And when you get enough people together that care that much, enough love is in a room, amazing things happen. And 
at one point, the cameras just sort of disappear when you're working with somebody like this. Like, Noel and I didn't get to share the screen. Also, I don't like him very much, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's why we kept him over uh, here. Yeah, thank you. Share, thank you. Right? Also, yeah. it, was a, it was a special request. Come at me, bro. Um, but there was a time when John and I were in a scene. It was, um, we were over, uh, one of our soldiers is down, and we're trying to, like, revive him. And he just looks at me, and I, my body just got up. And I don't know why. It was the right thing to do, but he made me stand up. That's how good he is. You get enough amazing people that care together, and really cool shit happens, man. And then about being unprepared, like, it's the first time most of these guys ever saw a real firefight. So, yeah, he's right. Be unprepared. Be shocked. Let's catch that. And maybe we'll be better at being vessels for something really amazing. Absolutely. Uh, time for one more question. Hey, guys. Uh, so I guess for the actors, like, after filming this series, like, at the end of the day, do you guys feel like you've fulfilled your purpose as to, you know, showcasing these stories and, you know, hoping that, you know, audiences be able to relate to them? Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was, though. He was awesome. Was awesome. <laughs> no, man, I mean, you can, you can try, right? And, uh, and you, you can try to do your best to fulfill the, the book, the, 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 the scripts. Uh, you, all you can do is your best. Um, I, I also just want to add, I mean, I know we're all talking from our heart about this and it's, and it's very easy to get um, wrapped up in the emotion of it and you will feel that when you're watching it, but for those who haven't seen it and get to see it, it's also a really badass, bitchin', action-packed. It's a brotherhood <laughs> and everyone's great, having fun too. Great absolutely. story, yeah. Like, I mean, um, you know, it's easy to get pulled into that because it, we all felt that about it, but it's also really just a Yeah, we shoot some show. guns. Cool. We, we get to kick doors and stuff. So And I, it's a story I, I of hope, fulfilled. right? I mean, it really is. Yes, yeah. it is. Besides the badassery, and, you know, no, which but I let's, think you'll learn Let's me, talk right? just a little yeah. longer yeah. about the badassery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe later. Okay, uh, you you're know. right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's no, it's total story. badass. Total. These yeah. guys are... Uh, it, uh, let me answer the question, and you guys could too. They totally captured it. I mean, they did everything justice. They, they, who would know? You had no idea how to handle your weapons and your Kevlar and all that. You, you faked it really well. You, <laughs> that's why they call you actors. You're all really good ones. But they, they all captured the reality of this. And that's, that's again, it, it's easier to capture when it's a real story. Somebody was trolling somebody online the other day and they were saying, Gary Valesky would never say, say that. And I, I rarely respond to trolls, but I'm, yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, come to me, baby. That's exactly what he said. This is a true story. And I have friends who'll back me up on that. Yeah, could you guys speak on that, actually? There is no higher praise when a widow or a mother that gave up her child hugs the actor and said, thank you for what you just did for sharing my son's story. Like, there is no higher praise than that. Like, you can't say anything better. And these guys earned it. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to look somebody in the eye that, that gave somebody up 13 years ago and take their hand and make them a meal to show them around the set and to be there when they were like, this is where my son died. That's intense. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Well, it's a beautiful story of hope, as Martha said. Please tune it out. Uh, please check it out, guys. Tuesday night on National Geographic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Both those things. All of those things. Thanks so much, guys. Thank beautiful. You.